right, well, let's get started. Good morning from Chestnut Ridge Baptist Church. Welcome to all of you guys out there and in here. Let's pray. Lord, we just come to you right now and we just thank you for this word that we get to open up and we get to identify why the disciples, what were they searching for? What were they waiting for? What were they looking for? And Lord, as we open this up, I pray that you just give us eyes of wisdom. Open our eyes and open our mind just as you opened theirs to see. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So um, today we're going to be looking at last week we saw where Jesus had already risen from the dead. Now we're going to see how Jesus appeared again as they were walking down, um, as they were walking and trying to overcome their grief you know the sadness that they were um, remember at the, when we ended last week we talked about how Jesus said do this in memory of me um, and he, he said that when they were sharing bread today you know we we think about that and we wonder about you know what do we do in remember to remember things well this is Memorial weekend and as we think about um, Memorial Weekend. What are we supposed to remember on Memorial Weekend? I guess people we knew. People we knew. What they did or something. Yeah, people that we knew. Um, what they fought for. You know, the freedoms that they fought for, so that we could be where we are today. Um, I I had to kind of think about that. You know, and and what we'll look at in the um, the rest of our lesson is how Jesus commissioned the disciples to preach the word. But you know, we think that that's only by teachers or only by pastors or only by evangelists. But you know, I think that even, don't you think, Catherine, that even in our daily activities, we can do what God wants us to do? I think that's what I'm saying. Absolutely, it is. That's, that's saying, every, everyone, it ain't for leaders and whatever. That's right, it's for all of us. Yeah. It's for all of us. But we're a picture of what it should be. That's right. And is there a point where we get too old to share? When we die. When we die. That's exactly right. Am I too old? No. No. Um, I love Psalm 92 because it says that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. And we had all these winds this last couple of days. And I couldn't help but think of a palm tree again. Because what happens to palm trees? During the hurricane forces, man, they're blown right down. And yet, they'll come back up. And it's the strength of the, the wind that makes them stronger and makes their root system grow so deep. And it does the same thing to an oak tree. An oak tree, if you raise up an oak tree, or and I have a great big uh, uh, plant, a <laughs> tropical plant that has giant leaves on it, which just slipped my mind as to what it's called. But when it was in the basement, it had pretty leaves, but they would get up this tall and then they would fall over. And so when I took it outside, all the leaves that were in the house that were big have all fallen down and have died. But now I have these nice new sprouts coming up and new leaves, and they withstood that, str that strong wind because as they've grown, they've had that wind forcing up against them, and so it's made them stronger. And that's kind of what happens to us. You know, our lives, when we get those hurricane force winds of life and problems and issues that come into our life, it may knock us around a bit, but God uses that to strengthen us. And so that's what we want to do is I want to be able to, um, even in, you know, what, if, here's our first question. It says, what, what do we, can we have that we appreciate? Do we just do our duties, um, with an attitude of thanksgiving or do we do it with oh, i have to wash the dishes again i have to go i have to turn the water on well there's a lot of people in africa that still don't have water and they walk to get water to carry it and would be glad to wash in a washing machine good morning pauline i'm so glad you're oh we'll be praying about it. she's pauline is still having trouble with dizziness um, she's had some inner ear issues that's not quite right um, but she's watching today so we're glad you're here um, but I was thinking about that and I thought 
sometimes I don't like to do laundry, but boy, it's so nice to be able to put my clothes in a washing machine, not having to go to the river and wash them in a dirty river. <laughs> and, you know, so we have so many things to get to be blessed with that sometimes I think we forget it. Um, you know, and here we're looking at <clears throat> what happens. And, and one of the first verses I want to start with is in Philippians. Because this is kind of what, you know, at this point, Jesus has been resurrected. And so in Philippians 3.10, it says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings and becoming un like unto him, unto his death. Well, you know, we always think about the resurrection of Christ and we have all those good things. But sometimes in order to get to the good, you have to endure the sufferings. And we all know that because after we've lived a little while, it doesn't take very long to find out that there's life is not always, it's not a bowl of cherries, is it? it has lots of pits. <laughs> and it's in those sufferings that we learn and that we can become what God wants us to be. Um, and so we're going to keep going and we're going to see where the disciples are. Because at this point, you know, some of them have seen Jesus walking during the time where after he died and he rose again, he keeps appearing to, to his disciples, but they're still grieving. And so that's where we're coming in. And I couldn't help but think about how, as you know, last week we talked about this. Now, now it's, they're at a point where they're still kind of waiting they're wanting to see, they're still trying to put it all into, into feeling as to what exactly happened. Why did Jesus die? You know, when you go through grief, there's so many stages. And one of the first stage is anger. And so you get angry. And then, you know, then of course it's through sadness. And, but what happens is sometimes it boggles your mind and you don't think straight when you're in a time of grief. And I think that's what was happening to the disciples is I think they were struggling. They were wondering what is going on? Why is all of this stuff happening? And so that's where we're gonna take start out today. The tomb was empty, but they were still in despair and darkness. They were still overwhelmed by what they had seen. So we're gonna start at verse 36. Would you read that, please? Yep. As they were saying these things, he himself stood in their midst. He said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Okay. So what did Jesus say first? Peace. Peace to you. Jesus said, Peace to you. Peace be with you. Jesus knew that they were struggling. And so he's trying to give them the comfort that they needed. And now here, you think, if you would go to a funeral and that person was standing behind you and said something to you, that's right. You know? <laughs> it would startle you. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it would. And so they're 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 trying. You know, in their in their finite mind, they're trying to explain away the facts. Sometimes we don't have explanation, which is why it says, lean not on our own understanding. Um, so then, so then there, what does verse 37 say? They were startled and terrified. <laughs> Star they, they were startled and terrified and thought they saw a ghost. And so here they are, they're living in fear. They're not living in faith because Jesus had really told them, you know, he foretold them all kinds of things. The last 30 years, he told them what was going to happen. He told them he was going to die. He told them he was going to rise again. And he told them that he would come back alive. But they're not, they're not there yet. They, their eyes have not been open. And so when you live in fear, what happens? They can't think straight. And so here the here they are, they're kind of they're startled and they're terrified and they're now they're thinking they're seeing a ghost. Now they're thinking they're 
Sometimes, you know, you, you get hallucinating. And yet Jesus comes right back again. And he says, why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and look at my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones just as you see that I have. So here's Jesus and he's saying, will you just look at me? And that's not enough. I want you to, do you see that I have the markings of, that Jesus did? But I want you to touch me. See that I am flesh and blood. Now he's in a resurrected body. And at one point they said, he said not to touch me. But at this point, Jesus wants to kind of get rid of their doubts. You know, fear causes doubt. And that's what was happening is the fear that they had. Well, why were they afraid? Well, you, you're experiencing something that you've heard of before. That's never happened before. You know, anything happens even to us today that never happened before. You're curious. Yes, you know, what, yes. What is this? Yes, exactly, exactly. That's a great, that's such a good point because when we don't, and when we don't understand something, you know, it does, it can cause... It doesn't make any human sense. That's exactly right. And when it doesn't make those sense, it causes those doubts to arise. And when you start doubting, then you start questioning, well, maybe what he said wasn't true. You know, and, and it, it, it brings in those little, you know, the, slide, the, the doubts begin to slide in. And, and Jesus comes right out at and says, why are you troubled? Why are you doubting? I wrote down here, what are you thinking about? I can just hear Jesus saying, why are you doubting? What are you thinking about? Aren't you remembering? Remember what I've told you? All the things, go back and look at what I've told you. Think about that because that's what faith is. Faith is believing without seeing. I, I have a question on that. Sure. I have a question on my mind. It ain't no doubt that's the way it is, but I always figured when you're resurrected from the dead, when you come back to life, it's a spirit instead of a body. But here, he came back in a body form. Right. And I think that that was for two reasons. I think he was both. And because he first number one, he is man and God. So his man spirit was a spirit, but because he wanted to prove to them that he was flesh and blood, he was alive. He wanted them to be able to take on corporal <laughs> corporal. I, I was seeing thought and compared the identity of the person that came back yes what's inside of it no oh that's no. there isn't anything up no. oh no. Right. So when i said dead person there's that body that that person lived in yeah yeah they ain't there. no they're gone no the spirit the yeah. spirit's alive well, that's when the two separate yes yes my when my brother-in-law died his the when the people came and said we died at such and such a time the son of the girl with him said no i didn't I seen him go out of there at five o'clock this morning. I said, I, he said, I just saw him raise and go. And I told my sister, I said, he needed to see that. I don't care which color. He that's saw right. it in his that's mind. Right. He saw that's it. right. That's right. And that's when the spirit mm -hmm. left his dad. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and absolutely. Thought, even though it's weird and yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that, that didn't happen. But to me, in his mind, that happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you know, um, during Luke's passing, uh, my nephew, when there was a point where I had just found out and I had a fragrance that was filling my basement and I couldn't find it and I didn't know what it was. And it was really a strange thing because I'm pretty aware I had my flowers and plants down there, but nothing, there should not have been a, a beautiful, it was a wonderful, wonderful aroma. And I just kept searching. What I ended up finding it was a palm tree that I had received or brought back from my father-in-law's funeral from 1997, had blossomed and the fragrance from that was had filled my entire basement. And it really felt like there was a, a connection there. 
between my father-in-law who was in heaven and Luke. And it was, it was, I felt in my own self, I felt like it was just God giving me that encouragement that they're together, they're together. And sometimes, you know, we try to poo-poo some of these things, but you know, we don't know what God's gonna do. He's God, he can do all kinds of things. And we're gonna go on and see how Jesus appeared and disappeared in the, in the 40 days where he was walking with the disciples. He was there, but then he was gone. Or we're gonna see in just a few minutes how he just showed up. He wasn't there before, but he was just there. And can you do that as a, a physical body? Not necessarily. Can you do it as a spirit? Absolutely. So there's a lot of things that we can't, we can't, um, we can't explain. Like you said just a few minutes ago, there are things that we can't explain. And that's where the disciples are as well. Because in verse 41, it says, um, well, let's, oh, he said, having said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his feet. And he said, touch me. And you know, when you're grieving, you need that, that physical touch. Sometimes you need a touch more than you need words. You know, we sometimes think that you have to just go in and say something. But sometimes when people are grieving, they just need your physical presence there. That's all. And I think that's what Jesus was doing. Jesus was there and he said, look, touch me. And I couldn't help but think of during COVID, that's why we've had so many people with so many anxiety issues because people are not allowed to touch. People are not allowed to hug during the whole masking and COVID. Um, and it caused a lot of great, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety and a lot of suicides. There were and those have been hidden, but there's a lot of suicides, especially in young children, where they could not deal with it. But here's Jesus, and he's saying, touch me. Touch my hands and my feet to know that I am, a, I am alive right now. And he wanted to comfort them. When he said this, verse 40, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of the joy, believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? <laughs> so, so here's Jesus, he's going, okay, since they won't believe that, <laughs> they're still, he's, they're still questioning, he's going, do you have anything to eat? And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish and they took it and he ate it in their presence. Okay, so here's Jesus and he's going, okay, since you won't believe, that I'm Jesus, because and you you won't touch me, uh, even though I put my hands, my feet out here. I want you to touch them to see that I'm real. You're still not believing. You're thinking that I'm still a ghost. I want to eat with you. And what was the last thing that he said at the Last Supper? And we say this all the time when we do communion. Remember, remember me. And here's Jesus going. Remember, let's eat together. And he's just trying to instill back in them that I am real. Whether he's in flesh or in spirit or both, he's trying to explain to them. He's trying to set them up to understand that he is still real. And so amazed, Jesus further wanted to prove that to them by eating with them. Well, you know, when we, because even then, they, a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, so a ghost could not eat. Um, and so they, stand, they stood amazed, trying to understand. Well, disbelief because of their joy. You know, when you think of that, because of their joy, what was it? I don't understand how that was kind of... <laughs> yeah, how is it all going together? So you're, how can you be in disbelief because of their joy. What? Um, it's, it's a bit of an oxymoron there. And I think what really is going on here is that, you know, when you have grief, you remember these wonderful times and here they are, they're seeing Jesus and they're going, he's alive again. They don't really think that he's dead <laughs> because that's one of the stages of grief as well. 
that you don't believe it. it it's, it's beyond, you can't, it, it's like it never happened. And here, so here they are. And so I think they're kind of working through each one of these phases of grief and Jesus is walking with them and trying to be that for him. And that's why I started out with the Philippians because it's in the power of his resurrection that we have the strength to go on. Yes. When you think about it, that how Luke, John, Paul, whoever wrote these words, mm -hmm. and Peter, what if? And yes, that's exactly right. That's so funny because I do have a what if in here. As I was thinking about this, I said, well, what if Jesus had not done this? And what if they just turned off and went in there and it? Exactly. What if we changed it? Um, what if it wasn't like this? And, and, it's coming up still. Um, but as we look towards that, we have to kind of go, okay, so as believers, we have the assurance that Jesus is alive. But what about those people that don't know that? Like you're saying, what about people who don't have the assurance that Jesus is alive? I know Jesus is alive because he's in my heart. And I can feel his presence with me all the time. But for somebody who doesn't believe that, then what? I wonder if there's a way that we can share that power with them. I think, I think if people like that are waiting for some kind of a not unusual, something that they can't explain. Yes. You know, something that affects them deep and joy that they knew they didn't deserve. Right. They figured out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Had to have been. You yep. know, there has to be something to this because this couldn't happen normally or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But. Absolutely. But it makes me really want to make sure that I am living a life that, that shows Jesus' resurrection power in me. You know, because I think sometimes too many Christians, it's woe is me. That's what's wrong. I think I, with, uh, with too many Christians that don't act like Christians. Yeah, we were talking all these other people that's got doubts anyway. Yeah, we were talking about denominations today, and Pat and I were, and, and as we were talking, I said, you know, I wonder sometimes when you go to church and you walk in and you see all these faces. Yep, I'm here. I'm doing my duty. Who wants that? <laughs> I wouldn't you know, want I, that. I've been guilty of doing the same thing. I just go to church and I just sit around and around. See who's got her hair done and who's got this on. <laughs> I wonder where he's at. Yep, why aren't they here? Yeah. Yes. You know? Yep, and why the kids are so loud. Yourself, a lot of times you go to church on Sunday morning because it's a habit, you just do it. Mm -hmm. That's what you do on Sunday. You get mm -hmm. to church. Mm -hmm. And when you get home, what did they preach about? Well, that means much. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And, and I think that we have to make sure that we don't do that because being a Christian is, it's an active, it's active. It's not something that we can just, we need to let our whole life be worthy and show the power of the resurrection. But the, secret, but the scary thing of it is, in my mind, how come this don't come out of me all the time? Yeah, well, how come we have to fight that? Yeah, Paul asked that same question. <laughs> Why do I do the very things that I hate? Yeah. You know, because we live in a world that, we live in a, a sinful world. Right. There is not another, there's not going to be a day goes by until we're dead that we're not going to sin. 
And that's why we have, got, we have Jesus' forgiveness on a constant basis. You know, he gave it to us. Um, he gave that thing. I, when we think about what Jesus did when he died on the cross, he took on not only the sins of the world then, but he took on past, present, and future. So any sins that I create, that I do, between now and when I die, he's already forgiven. Again, that's beyond my mental capacity. Right, right. However, because we can't do that. No, we can't. And when we think about that, though, Catherine, oh my goodness, that should just fill our hearts with joy all the time. But it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. We sometimes get woe down with life. And yet we have to go, no, no. And I, I love David because David says, why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Get it out of the, get it off of yourself. Put it back in God. And I think that's what Jesus is doing here. He's saying, touch my hands, touch my feet. Look at me, eat with me. Remember what I've done because I'm here for you. I want you to live in the power of the resurrection. Um, and then verse 44, would you read verse 44? Oh, he told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. Huh, that's our key. That's the key. Mind. Yes, stop right there. Yes, that's exactly right. He opened their minds. And that's, you know, we get this idea that, well, how come thus and such won't listen to me? Why can you share the gospel, share the gospel, share a good word? You know, it's their eyes have not been opened. He opened their minds to understand the scripture. And when I looked at that, I was just so overwhelmed because I thought, Lord, that's how we need to be praying. We need to quit praying, Lord, be with. We need to say, Lord, open their eyes that they will see the power of the resurrection. Open their eyes that, that they will hear your words. Open their eyes that they would see God's word for the first time, even though they've been in church for 30 years. Don't you think that that happens to us? So oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't see it, don't understand, don't make no sense. That's right. You know? That's right. Until God opens our minds so that we can understand the scripture. That's why you can read the same scripture verse for 50 years. And after the 51st year, you're going to get a totally different meaning. You go, oh my gosh. I never saw that before. I never saw that before. Exactly. I never saw that before. Because God's, the scriptures are going to be open to us and we will have a new understanding of them. And I don't you think, Catherine, that sometimes Satan kind of blocks us from seeing the word? Oh, yeah, usually they can. Absolutely. Because he's the father of lies. And as the father of lies, he's going to take the scripture and he's going to twist it just a little bit. Oh, now, that's not really the truth. It's like, which he's done since the Garden of Eden. But that apple's not really poison. Yeah, it's not really going to give you the power of life and death. <laughs> right from the very beginning. Verse 46, it says, He also said to them, This is what was written. The Messiah will suffer. But he didn't stop there. And he said, and he will rise from the dead on the third day. And that's the power of the resurrection. That, Isn't that difficult for the ghost to sink in? Oh, somebody told us that would be mm -hmm. Right. It it's is. never been done. That's right. It's never been done. Well, Lazarus. Um, and, you know, the power of the resurrection. It is alive. Jesus is alive today. And... That's what he wants us to share. He wants us to share that with joy. When Lazarus died, that he wasn't killed, was he? He Didn't wasn't. He just died? Right, he died. Yeah. And then Jesus or rose him. But he was dead for three days. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus wrote, <laughs> rose him up from the grave. Um, and I know that there have been cases. Actually, I know a, a gentleman, a pastor gentleman, a friend of ours. Um, he is down in Florida, a great ball. And he died he was jogging and had a heart attack and died and they found him on the road 
and he is alive and well today. Well, Bill's mom said that she died. Uh, she had a real high fever and stuff, and she died, and she saw, she told what she saw, and how pleasant it was, and how beautiful it was, and she didn't want to come back. Um, but I, <clears throat> to me, they're, I don't think they're dead dead. <laughs> is there a difference? I don't know. <laughs> Make him really dead. Yeah. Uh, Listen, you know, sometimes you're in deep, deep sleep and you dream all this stuff and then you yeah. come alive and think, what yeah. was I at? I don't know. We'll ask the Lord when he gets back. <laughs> there are a lot of books that are written yeah, that way. I'm actually know. reading one that says 90 Minutes in Heaven um, now as there well. Be, you know, and I'm we just like us, you know, it's, eh. could it, it could be. We don't know. Right. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. And if it is, wow, that's awesome. Um, and the little gal that we were praying for, Mia, do you remember we were praying for Mia a back a ways ago? She had a, um, a tree fall and hit her in the head and cut her brain. And she was, they really um, thought she wasn't going to survive either. But one day she had told her mom, she goes, I saw Jesus. You know, and so, and she's, she was three. You know, and there are cases like that where people have gotten to the point where they see Jesus and whether it's in a spirit like the disciples did or it's an encouragement or whatever it is where God touches you, so be it. You know, we'll find all those answers when we get to heaven. What a great day you that'll feel be. really guilty if you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Here we are. Oh. Did I live a life worthy? Yes, yes. Did I live, for me, it's did I live a life worthy of what God wants me to be? Um, I think that would be my biggest regret is did I do all that he wanted me to do? That's, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a task-oriented person. <laughs> um, but then verses 48 and 49, it says, you are witnesses of these things. This is Jesus talking. He says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. Okay, but he didn't say that. He didn't stop there. He said, I'm sending you what my father has promised. And then he said, but you must stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. And you know, sometimes we have to wait for the promise to come through. God's promises are always true, always true. But his timing is different than our timing. And so sometimes he wants to wait for his promises to come through, to wait for his anointing. And when that anointing comes, we, saw, we see in Luke that when the apostles were anointed, that's when things changed. That's when their lives changed. And so at that point, then he led them out uh, into Bethany, and while they were still speaking to him, he was taken up into heaven. And whether bodily or or spirit, he so that, ascended into the heaven. Appearance of that body when they went somewhere. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. But his body in the grave was gone. Right. So they never did find his body. They never found the bones. They never found any of that. He was completely gone. And so he was res resurrected body, spirit, and soul. He was resurrected the whole thing. And you know, when we do that, when Jesus was ascended, he ascended to the Father. And he told the disciples at that point, go to that upper room and wait for me. Wait for the power of the resurrection to come unto you. And then we see in Luke what happens after that power of the resurrection. And I was kind of sad. I was hoping that they would go into Acts um, during the summertime. But there, instead, we're going into Job and Ecclesiastics, which... I just think, though, but it, the Bible says you go back to ashes when you die. Yes. And the thing of it is, it might be the difference in us in the resurrection as a spirit, because I don't think a spirit goes in the ground. Spirit doesn't go in the ground. Body goes in the ground. Yeah, because the two separate. It's That's just right. Like that locust. That's right. It's gone. It's shell. That's right. Here's a shell. Here's a shell. Yep. Know. It's That's gonna right. It's going to go in the ground. It's right. Going to be it's going to go back to dirt. Yeah. Dust. Yep. You 
Your spirit, your spirit's going to go to be with the Lord. Right. Absolutely. You are 100% right. And so, you know, now, right now, so, so the disciples have had Jesus walking with them for the last 40 days. And he's had, they, he has re-emphasized all of the things that he taught. And at one point he said that he was with them and re-taught them many things. And I thought, okay, so, so we think, if you think about this, okay, we, we've watched Jesus's ministry to them, how he shared parables and how he talked to the disciples and he, he filled them with such knowledge and, and I want to say understanding, but he filled them with knowledge and wisdom. But at, until he opened their minds and he retaught them the scriptures, then they were able to understand. And I think sometimes we get caught is we don't, we may read it, but we don't really truly understand it because our minds are closed. And so I just thought, gosh, Lord, I have a new fervor to really pray for an open mind, that our minds are open, that we will be able to see who God is and to be able to, to know the power of his resurrection in our lives. And if I have to wait for God's anointing to come on me for that, then I'm going to wait for it. But in the meantime, I'm going to share, I'm going to take that commission and I'm going to share God's love with as many people as I can. For me, my passion is sharing hope. And I think that's one of the things that the disciples were searching for. They were searching for that hope. They, they had lost all hope. When, when your loved one dies, you lose hope. And that's what happened here. They lost hope. They thought everything was gone. All that they had worked for is gone. They didn't understand there was so much more yet to come. And I think if we can, even if, and this is what I was trying to, I'm looking at for myself. If we can, even with the way the world is today, you know, it seems like the end times are getting closer and closer and closer. And yet we're supposed to live that abundant life. Does that mean we're not going to have any problems? No, no, we're certainly going to have all kinds of problems. <laughs> They're going to have them there. We're going to have them there, but we're going to have that joy and the peace and the strength because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when we take in his joy, then he will give us the strength to move on to the next place to be. Amen. God, because anything else, the joy we get out of eating a good dinner, well, how long does that last? That's right. You know, or anything else. Let's That's right. Seeing somebody do something or right. whatever. Somebody graduated. Somebody did this. Somebody did that. But we got it all backwards. You know when people We die, do have it backwards. We get all mournful and pitiful and... And you know, you, I, you know, and absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We have the hope of heaven and we should be rejoicing, but that sorrow is still fills our heart because we're overwhelmed with ill loneliness, with them, yeah. with their absence of them. And yet they are in such a far better place. I think of Lynn. Um, I was thinking of her this morning and I thought she's finally able to run around and, and breathe. You know, and all these ladies that I know that are struggling with the very breath and just have some friends of ours that both of them have COVID. And I think, oh my goodness, Lord, how much more? And yet that joy, that peace, and that hope all comes from God. And that's what we have to stand in. Like you were just saying, that's where we stand. We cannot stand in trying to get our hope from the world. We can't stand in trying to have peace from the world. We're certainly not going to find it there. And Jesus said that. He said, my peace I give to you, not like the world gives, but as, but as the Father gives. It's such a different, it's what, when we call joy, I don't think we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it feels good, and that joy, I guess, of a good feeling, but the peace. It's a peace comes, that surpasses all understanding. Yeah, it don't make no sense. That's exactly right. Yeah. It, may, it does not make sense. The kids, when they were little, there was this little song that they would sing, and it was for joy. It said, 
Put Jesus first and others second and put yourself at the end of the line and you will find your heart will be filled with J-O-Y. And you know, when you think about that, that's really what it's all about. If we remember to put Jesus first and others second and put ourselves at the end, we're not gonna be filled with all of those sad emotions or all of the anxious thoughts or all of the anger that they that the disciples must have felt because they they watched their savior killed you know and the fear that they felt yes that's right none of it panned out the way they thought because remember last week we even looked at he was supposed to come as a king and rule and get rid of all of the Romans, and he didn't. And so not only are they dealing with everything else, but they're dealing with disappointment because their expectations had not been fulfilled. And so here again, but Jesus said, when I go, I will send a comforter to you. And that's what it's all about, is that when Jesus left, he sends us the Holy Spirit. And that was the anointing that the disciples received was the Holy Spirit anointing. And that's what they filled them up. And when they were filled with that Holy Spirit, what happened? Peter was able to preach. They spoke in other tongues. And people heard them preaching in whatever language they knew. And I... Gosh, if we had that power, our world would be a different place. Our world would be a different place. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you that you opened their eyes. Father, I pray that right now you would open our mind, open our eyes, open our ears for the very first time, that you would give us a mind and heart of understanding to see and know and share your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.